banking law unit 2 so there are basically three important concepts in banking law unit 2 the banking regulation act 1949 the reserve bank of india and the deposit insurance corporation act 1961 so in this unit there is not much explanation there are basically lot of points so let's see one by one first the banking regulation act 1949 its salient features has been asked for 10 marks so the act defines a banking and within its scope within this act scope it brings all the institutions of banking and it defines banking as receiving deposits which are repayable on demand or for lending or investment so the banking and institutions which take deposits from their customers and they return those deposits to their customer on customer's demand and they also give loans for investment to the customers the next important features is prohibition on non banking companies on accepting deposits so it prohibits the non banking companies on accepting deposits or they limit their deposits prohibition of trading to eliminate non banking risks prescribe minimum capital standards limit payment of dividends include institution of banking registered outside india so the institutions banking institutions which have their headquarters in india but i have their branches outside india even those institutions are within the scope of this act introduction of a licensing of banks and their branches so they provide a license to bank and their branches prescribing balance sheet confer power on rbi for periodical returns so all the banking institutions should give a periodical return to rbi inspection of books and accounts of a bank by rbi empower central government to take action against bank which is against interest of our depositors so any bank which is working against the interest of depositors central government may take action against them bring rbi closer to other banks expedite procedure for liquidation bring sbi within some provision of the bills then widening power rbi powers to come in aid of other banks in emergencies extension of act to acquiring states so these are the salient features of the banking regulation act 1949 the next important question is activities permitted to banking institutions so what are the activities that the banking institution can perform under this act so section 6 of this act says that borrowing raising money so a bank can borrow money raise money or maintain money in its bank then it can deal with negotiable instruments like a bill of exchange hun lead promissory notes and drafts then it can deal with the documents of titles like bills of lading and railway receipts then it can deal with the securities like debentures certificates and scripts and it can deal with physical securities like mortgages lease etc and it can also have safe vaults lower locker facility in their banks the next activity permitted is they can act as an agent or attorney for government or customer then they can a contract for public loans so they can enter into a contract with public to for loans they can give loans to public then managing and carrying public or private any issue like shares stocks etc and providing loan for it so any individual or private is spending on shares or stocks then they can manage them and give them loan for it transacting any guarantee service then managing or selling any property in possession of company satisfying claims so if the company has any uh, property in it any position in it then they can sell it then holding property a bank can hold property then executing trusts administration of estates as securities trusts etc then aiding establishments or companies pensions insurance etc they give pensions insurance of managing the salary of establishments or companies acquisition construction or maintenance of any building for company so they can acquire any building or construct it or maintain it selling improving mortgaging property or dealing with a property acquiring a business of a company if specified in this act then promotion of advertisement of a company 
and any other business that the central government may specify. So these are the activities permitted to a bank. The next important concept is Reserve Bank of India. So what is the Reserve Bank of India? It is a central bank of India which controls the policies of a national currency. So it issues currency basically. It's a central bank of India. So what are its functions? Issuer of currency in India. It issues currency of India. Then it is a banker to the government. It performs the banking operations to government. That is giving loan, taking the deposits, etc. Then it is a banker to commercial banks. So even commercial banks have their account in Reserve Bank of India. And Reserve Bank India is a bank to commercial banks. Organizer of commercial banking system by creating monetary and credit policies. Then it is a regulator and a supervisor of a financial system by prescribing parameters of banking operations. Then it gives a financial supervision under guidance of a board for financial supervision BFS. Then it provides a monetary authority by maintaining monetary policy to maintain price stability. Then monetary and credit policies. Then controls the volume of a credit created by commercial banks. So the amount of loan that a commercial bank can give it controls. Authority to regulate and supervise the payment systems. Manager of a foreign exchange, external trade. So even a trade it manages. Maintains the value of currency, internal and external. So by the value of rupee in India and outside India, it controls. Development of rural banking in rural areas. Then money and capital market. Further promotion of financial institutions. And development role of RBI. So these are the functions of RBI. The next important concept is control of RBI over commercial banks. So this also has been asked as a 10 mark question. So how RBI controls commercial banks? So the commercial banks should maintain accounts with RBI. So they should have a bank account in RBI. Then RBI is a banker to commercial banks. So RBI acts as a banker. They accept deposit of commercial bank and they give loan to commercial bank. Then controls activities of a commercial bank under Banking Regulation Act 1949. So the RBI controls activities of commercial banks. Then issue license to commercial banks. So any commercial bank, if, they want, if it wants to establish a bank, then they should take a license from RBI. Inspect a commercial bank. So they are working against the interest of depositors, then RBI can inspect any commercial bank. Control and management of a commercial bank. So even the management is controlled by RBI of commercial bank. Then power to supersede a board of, board of directors of commercial bank for six months. So if any commercial bank is working against the interest of depositor, then the RBI can take over for that bank for six months. Then control bank rates. So bank rate is the loan that RBI gives to commercial banks. So it specifies the limit of uh, limit to the loan that a RBI can give to commercial bank, and on that loan it specifies interest. So that interest is called a bank rate. So RBI controls bank rate. Then RBI controls a repo rate. So apart from the normal loan that RBI gives, the commercial banks can take extra loan by depositing securities, by giving securities to RBI. So even that much loan the RBI can uh, limit. It is called a repo rate. The next we have commercial bank keeps certain percentage of deposit reserves with RBI. So certain percentage of deposits of commercial bank, they keep it with RBI. The next is control of RBI over non-banking financial companies, NBFC. So how RBI controls non-banking companies. Control over the deposits under the Companies Act rules in 1975. So it controls the deposits of non-banking companies. It limits the deposits. Then ceiling limit on a deposits, so it gives the limit to a deposits of a non-banking companies. Then regulation of a brokerage. Cash reserves, so 10% of assets to be kept in cash, the non-banking companies. The 10% of assets, they should keep it as a cash. Compulsory registration with the RBI, so any non-banking company above 50 lakh fund, having above 50 lakh fund should compulsory register with the RBI. Then bank rate of formation, so rate of interest charged by central bank while lending loan to commercial bank. Next important concept is bank rate formation. So bank rate formation is nothing but the rate of interest charged by central bank while lending loan to commercial banks. 
so it's a determined by central finance authority and it is done quarterly so it is nothing but the loan that rbi gives to commercial bank on that loan the rbi specifies the interest so it is bank rate the next is a monopoly of currency issue next important concept is a monopoly of currency issue so what is this monopoly of currency issue so in india central bank alone has the authority to issue currency this is called monopoly of currency issue only rbi has the sole power to issue currency so any currency notes and coins issued by rbi are the legal tender money so legal tender money is the money which an individual or any person in the country is bound to accept it by law so it is called legal tender money and rbi is the issuer of legal tender money reasons for monopoly why it has been monopolized so uniformity in money distribution so there will be a uniformity in money distribution if only one bank produces it issues it then enables government to have supervision and control over supply of money in country so government can supervise the money flow of money then it enables rbi to control over creation of credit by commercial banks so the amount of loan commercial bank gives the rbi can control it The next important concept is the Deposit Insurance Corporation Act, nineteen sixty one. Its objectives and main features have been asked for ten marks. So, what are its objectives? It is an act to provide establishment of corporation for purpose of insurance of deposits and guaranteeing of credit facilities and other matter connected therewith or incidental thereto. So, a bank can take insurance of its deposit from this Deposit Insurance Corporation Act, nineteen sixty one. So it's basically an insurance company to banking institutions. What are its major features? Quick liquidation. So the operation is completed in ninety days. So if any bank claims insurance from this company, they give quick cash within ninety days to its account holder. Then increasing the premium for deposit insurance. So they have increased the premium for the deposit insurance. Twice a year the premium has to be paid, and it is a twelve paise per hundred INR. increases only with agreement of rbi so once they have decided the premium or if they want to increase the premium they have to take agreement from rbi then deposit value protection so the purpose of a bank account holders who have deposited their money it protects the this corporation protects it so it gives a 5 lakh in 90 days deposited to a bank holder so if any bank holder claims from this insurance company they provide 5 lakh rupees within 90 days inclusion of both new and existing banks so all kinds of banks including rural and cooperative banks are included in this small llp scope enhanced so entities with a contribution of 5 crore and annual scale of 50 crore which was before set to 25 lakh and 40 lakh so they have announced the small llp the contributions the next important concept is general principles relating to secured loan So it is the concept of Banking Regulation Act, nineteen forty nine. So it is defined as a secured loan is a loan with a security. So any loan which is taken by against a security by giving security is called secured loan, and any loan which is taken without security is called unsecured loan. So what are the general principles in a secured loan? A loan backed by an underlying asset or collateral. So it is a loan which is backed by an underlying asset by giving depositing an asset or collateral. the asset is given to lender as a security for payment so this asset is given to the lender for security and against that security payment is taken borrower cannot be minor so the borrower has to be major object loan should be movable property so only movable property can be used as security object loan should be free from any encumbrance so it should not have any encumbrance any hindrance the property deposited then tender should be owner so the property that is deposited as a security the person is the depositing should be owner of it then of object loan for then a mortgage or pledge of movable property belonging to third party is invalid so only security can be done if the person is owner of it if it belongs to third party then it cannot be given as security then lender should have in possession a movable property given as security of loan so the person who is giving the loan before giving loan he should have the possession of the security then the lender should not part with movable property unless the debt is paid 
So unless the debt is paid, the person who have given the loan should keep that security with him, should not transfer it. Then the lender has authority to sell collateral in case of default. So if the customer has taken loan, if he defaults, if he doesn't pay anything, any uh, installment of the loan, then he can sell it and uh, take a profit from it. This concludes the second unit. Thanks for watching.